Um, the reason why I'm sort of changing gears again is because we started off by first identifying what the pentominoes are. We mostly got there, and then we, we now have a complete list. And now at the moment we've been trying to distinguish between the pentominoes and say, well, some of these characteristics and others have different characteristics, right? So I'm going to show you in a second what each one is. And there are vegetables and animals and minerals, okay? But I'm expecting once I show you, there might be some arguments. So here's my breakdown. I'd love you to have a quick comparison with what you think each of them is. I count, if you want to quickly check for yourself, I count one, two, three, four minerals, one, two vegetables, and then the rest are animals. Jessica, you have a thought? The giraffe. Yeah, the giraffe. Yep. How is that an animal? Yes. Can I ask, how many other people think this is a vegetable? Yeah, a few? A few? Other people can't decide yet? Okay, so, so let's think about this. This is a great question, and I really want you all switched on to this because this is where the thinking is involved, right? This is why we did this task. So I want to make sure everyone's eyes are up because I'm going to do something on the board so you can see it. Okay? <laughs> Mary's like, oh, I get it. Okay. So before I show you, before I try to convince you, that this is actually an animal, okay? Let's think about how you convinced yourself that it was a vegetable, because many people have convinced themselves, right? You've only got three options, right? Vishaka. There are three options, yeah? Three options? So I know, very good. I know some of you, what you would do is you would say, I'm going to eliminate options, right? For example, I'm going to try and eliminate that this is a mineral. Most people don't think it's a mineral, because what would you do to the giraffe? What would you do? Okay, I'm going to take the head of the giraffe, this is the top, right? And I'm going to move it down here where the legs were. Now my giraffe is upside down, this is the new head. So we know this guy can move back and forth. Yeah? So we at least can rule out that this is a mineral. So in mathematics, often we're trying to find a solution, and it can be easier to eliminate some possibilities than to try and find out what the correct one is. Okay? So we know it's at least a vegetable, we haven't ruled out that it's an animal. Can someone who's seen it, someone who's seen it, tell me, now what can I do? I've already done one move. What can I do further to actually get it away from its position? Louise, what do you say? Well, you've got to move the knotwork on the body and the neck, correct? This, this middle yes. part here? Yep. And move it, like, diagonally. So, down, like, vertically opposite? Yeah, okay, so it was here before. Can you see the move that Louise is describing? She's saying, okay, the, like... I don't know, I guess the, the in-between part is becoming a different in-between part. And right? then now you have a new head and move the head. Ah, very good. So at the moment, it's still sort of in place, but now I can sort of continue that same move. And my giraffe is, um, how would you describe this? I guess it's kind of like doing, I don't know, like backflips or something? I don't know. It's clearly getting out of there, isn't it? Okay, it's like digging into the ground. So this I know, this I know is, I mean, come on. I gave you guys a clue. I called it a giraffe, right? Anyway, some people are like, it's a fruit. Wait, what are the fruits? I don't know what fruits are. Okay, now, we have, we've got our 10 minutes left, and now we're going to do the harness version of the pentometer problem, okay? And this is actually, this is the real primary reason why I gave you this piece of paper, okay? So, remember, um, we introduced this when we just looked at all the polyominoes, right? And I showed you, you could combine polyominoes into a rectangle, right? Now, can you have a look at the dimensions of these rectangles? What are the dimensions? They're all the same very one. Large. Can you count them up? They are very large. Can you count them up? 10? 10. 10? 10 times 6, right? Now, I didn't choose that coincidentally. All the way back then, I was laying a seed. I was planting a seed for now, right? <laughs> Leah's just realized. Have a look at these pentominoes again. Have a look again. How many pentominoes are there? Each one has five squares. So how many squares are on the screen right now? There are 60. Exactly the same number as are in these rectangles. So here's your final challenge. Okay? Take, take your grid paper and cut out all 12 of the pentominoes and see if you can arrange them into a perfect rectangle. You're definitely going to need to work together for this. Good luck. Imagine I was trying to solve the puzzle and I'd done this. See where my shapes are? Can you see my shaded pentominoes? I've only put two pentominoes in, but you can already tell me 
that this will not lead to a solution. Think about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares left in the corner. Why is this a problem? Why is this, Jessica? You can't put like one shape or two. Yeah, if I put in one shape, I've still got leftovers. I can't put in two because then it'd overlap. This will help you. The last thing I want to show you is just to encourage you to say, yes, it's totally possible, okay? Um, there's not just one way, there are many, and in fact, I really want to encourage you and say, I am going to predict that many of you are going to get different solutions, and that's actually part of the challenge. Thank you, Year 8. Please make sure your scraps are in the recycling.